Here we'll take a look at leukemia as a topic that most med students are quite afraid of. But not to worry, we will go through this together, and by the time we're done, your thoughts will be extremely organized, and you'll be able to identify your patient very, very confidently. Let's take a look. Acutes. What does acute mean to you? It means fast. What does leukemia mean to you? It means cancer. Okay, a cancer developing from where? Bone marrow. That's where your focus will be initially. However, at some point in time, you do know that on your peripheral blood smear, you are then going to find an increased number of cells. That puts us into leukemia. And there's every possibility with the leukemia that it, these cells might then enter lymph node, and therefore the presentation here might be very much like a, a lymphoma. And I will tell you as to when that will be relevant to you for symptoms and signs as far as the patient's concerned. Is it neoplastic leukocyt leukocytic origin? If you find predominance of the immature cells, which are then called blasts, where? Bone, 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 bone marrow. B as in blasts, B and in bone marrow. When it's acute, what does this mean? Since this is a leukocytic type of neoplasm, that the cell within the bone marrow is not being matured quick enough. In fact, many of your cells of the neoplasm will remain in its blastic form, which is a very primitive and very young cell. By definition, ALL or AML, which are both acute leukemias, by definition, you have to find a greater than 20% blast in the bone marrow. Once that's understood, it's only then we can then move on. Symptoms due to marrow failure is exactly what you would expect. Secondary to leukemia. Now, even though we might find increased numbers of cells within the bone marrow and maybe, and we would, in the peripheral blood smear, so now we have two different compartments. These cells that you're producing are not working properly. Not only would you have problems with one type of cell, but many others. Therefore, you can expect there to be pancytopenia with acute leukemias. I mean, to say that you have leukopenia, anemia, and you have thrombocytopenia. Usually, the first symptom that the patient is exhibiting would be signs and symptoms of anemia, meaning to say fatigue and tiredness. The one that you're worried about very much in terms of pancytopenia would be the susceptibility to infections, leukopenia. Definition of acute leukemias, referring to both AML or ALO, greater than 20% 20, 20 blasts in the bone marrow. Etiology. Chromosomal abnormalities are a possibility, and that O'Down syndrome is something we'll take a look at. We'll take a look at ALL, ionizing radiation. We have chemical exposure, or maybe even perhaps alkylating agent. But wait, hold on for a second. You should be asking yourself, well, what does this mean? The patient was receiving chemotherapy for another type of cancer, and while receiving the chemotherapy, unfortunately develops another type of leukemia. So even alkylating agents that are being used to prior cancers might then unfortunately give rise to new leukemias. Age. Subtypes. There will be AML, ALL. Next, what do you want to do with acute leukemias? So far, you have a definition of leukemias. This is a neoplasm of your leukocytic origin from the bone marrow. We have greater than 20% blast from the bone marrow. And now we'll take a look at the various lineages of your cell or your bone marrow. There are two major lineages. One lineage would be myeloid. The other lineage would be lymphoid. If you're thinking myeloid, it's all cells except your T cells, B cells, and natural killer cells. So when you say acute myelogenous leukemia, you know that you're dealing with many different types of myeloid cells. Hence, you will be using what's known as FAB classification, M0 all the way out to M7. By the time you come to M3, you've heard of, well, this is a promyelocyte. Hence, M3, which we will be focusing upon, is called your acute promyelocytic leukemia or promyelocytic leukemia. Do not forget the other name. By the time you start getting to M5, you're producing more monocytic. By the time you start getting to M6, M5, M6, and such, more RBCs, and M7 will be megakaryocytes. All myeloid, all myeloid. Disease of immature granulocytes, 
seen in, well, basically all age ranges. Look at this, 15 to 60. So the age is not going to tell you much. Tell me what you're going to find in your bone marrow. A greater than 20% blast in your bone marrow. And if you're thinking myeloid, you're affecting all myeloid cells except T cells and B cells. What's the other type of acute leukemia? It's acute lymphoblastic leukemia would be the better name that you need to know. Once again, why do we call this lymphoblastic? Because you'll find greater, greater than 20% blast in the bone marrow. Since we're dealing with ALL, lympho, there's only two types of ALL, T-type, B-type, B-type, T-type, T-type, B-type. If it's your AML, there's seven different subtypes because there are seven different methods of developing other myeloid cells. Clear? Next, disease of immature lymphocyte, pre-B or pre-T ALLs. Typically, now you know that this is the youngest leukemia causing cancer. So in this, you're talking about age group of, well, less than 15 years of age. Number one leukemia in this age group. Next, well, the bone marrow here is what you're looking at, and so therefore you begin with what's known as your pluripotent stem cell. And with your pluripotent stem cell, you'll take a look at on the left, and you find giving rise to your lymphocyte origin. On your left, lymphocyte. Where am I? In the bone marrow. What are you going to begin with? On the very top, a progenitor or pluripotent stem, stem, stem cell. Depending as to what kind of factors come in, these stem cells are then going to differentiate into a lymphoid on your left, or on the right, all of your myeloid. The quick one here will be on the left. If you're dealing with ALL, the youngest age group of your leukemias, these are lymphocytic. It might either be T cells or B cells. That's it. Later on, we talk about chronicity. Obviously, dealing with CLL, there's only two types, T type and B type. Now, I could tell you quite confidently that the type that you want to pay attention to, either B or T, would have to be your B. And that's a good thing. I'll tell you why. If, if, if unfortunately, your patient goes on to develop leukemia, let's say a child, you want it to be, or you're hoping that it would be the B type. You'll see why. The T type will kill the child. B type prognosis is good. We'll talk more later. On the right, what kind of influences are taking place here? This is your granulocyte. CFU stands for colony-forming unit. And with this, you have your granulocyte monocyte CSF. So these are stimulating factors. If you're giving rise to your granulocytes, you're thinking about your T you're thinking about your uh, basophils, neutrophils, and your eosinophils, granulocytes. A granulocyte, you're thinking about your monocytes. What else are you giving rise to with the myeloid? If you take a look at the far right bottom por portion, the two cells that we're giving rise to on the very right, you take a look at that cell, that's a nucleated RBC. So it's an erythroid progenitor. So you might be thinking about normal blast, erythroid. What is that going to give rise to? With the help of erythropoietin, right, coming from the kidney, you're going to give rise to RBCs. What's the one next to it? That's your platelet, thrombo. But what do you call this when it's uh, in the bone marrow? Megakaryocyte. Megakaryocyte. This then gives you TPO, thrombopoietin. Do you see here clearly, everyone, you, that, this is the myeloid lineage giving rise to many, many, many different types of cells. You do want to know about the interleukins here. If it's going to be interleukin-5, you give rise to eosinophil. That's important. And then on the left here are the neutrophils and monocytes I was referring to. Our topic is AML, acute myelogenous leukemia. Our focus here will be, in fact, M3. You must memorize, if you haven't already, for M3, translocation 1517. And why that's important to you is the fact that you can actually treat a patient with AML M3 type with uh, a drug, a vitamin, actually, <laughs> a vitamin derivative known as Atra, all trans retinoic acid. How is it possible that you can specifically treat M3 with Atra and really none of the others? The translocation 1517 gives rise to NM3, a retinoic acid receptor alpha, ra ra, well, excuse me, <laughs> ra ra, receptor for vitamin A alpha is what that is. Retinoic acid receptor alpha. Excuse me, I it just sometimes you gotta laugh. Otherwise, it makes it quite difficult. 821 is another one. This is M2. Please note this is being myeloblastic, if I were you. Myeloblastic. Promyelocytic is M3. Myeloblastic is M2. Translocation, if you remember, is 821. 
Genetic abnormalities AML lead to defects in stem cell maturation, and by definition, uh, what kind of uh, blast are you going to find, or what percentage of blast are you going to find in your bone marrow here? Greater than 20% blast, by definition, by definition. A quick note about myelodysplastic syndrome, and why is it even here? Myelodysplastic syndrome, to make your life easier, you need to think of this being pre-leukemic. The method by which your patient most likely developed myelodysplastic syndrome was the fact that the patient was actually receiving treatment. While receiving treatment, unfortunately, the patient starts developing myelodysplastic syndrome. We call this pre-leukemic. Pre-leukemic specifically for AML. So that means that this patient is going to have a blast count above 10, but less than 20 in the middle. Let's take a look. May precede AML, myelodysplastic syndrome. Where are you? In the bone marrow, myelodysplastic syndrome. The diagnosis for myelodysplastic syndrome, because we as clinicians are getting better for diagnosing our patient, we are finding tons of patients that have MDS, only because we are asking the proper questions and we know exactly as to what we're looking for. It's not that the, uh, not the, not that the incidence is increasing or is the prevalence and such. It's just the fact that we know how to identify your MDS, and by doing so, you actually perhaps might be preventing a leukemia from taking on. It tends to occur in older individuals, especially common in those treated with prior chemotherapy. Look for that patient. Look for that patient, please, with myelodysplastic syndrome. Presents with, well, the first thing that you're going to find because your bone marrow has been affected is your pancytopenia. The symptom that the patient is going to first exhibit is going to be fatigue and tiredness. You as a clinician, though, are worried about what in this patient? Neutropenia. Therefore, you're worried about, once again, susceptibility to infection. And now, you do have shifting to the granulocyte. But remember, please, pre-leukemic. So you're not going to find a blast count greater than 20, less than 20, but pretty darn close. Dysplasia in one or more lineages. Myelodysplastic syndrome, it's, about to, it's getting ready to go on to acute myelogenous leukemia. Now, characterized by abnormal myeloblasts, large nuclei, and prominent nucleoli, what does this mean? Let's get back to the task at hand. I took a little bit of a pause there and uh, inserted myelodysplastic syndrome because I need you to understand that myelodysplastic syndrome would be, a, for you, considered to be a pre-leukemic issue, specifically for AML, and look for the patient's elderly and prior chemotherapy, myelodysplastic. Now, the blast itself, what is it? The blast has a large nuclei and a prominent nucleoli. It's a blast. It's huge. And on bone marrow aspirate, you'd find there to be greater than 20% blast with AML. Let's talk about M3 in greater detail. M3 is a pro-myelocytic type of myeloid cell. Acute pro-myelocytic leukemia. Cytoplasmic granules with occasional, occasional, known as R rods. Now, what are R rods? R rods are going to stain for, and look for this description, peroxidase. Okay, myeloperoxidase. <laughs> A couple of times when myeloperoxidase become important for you on your boards. Myeloperoxidase, the enzyme responsible for creating your bleach in your neutrophil. Remember that? Myeloperoxidase. You go from a hydrogen peroxide into bleach or a hypochlorous acid, number one. Number two, our rod stains for myeloperoxidase. And number three, if I was to tell you that uh, your patient may be, well, staining for what's known as your, well, you have C anchor and P anchor, right? And with this, one of those anchors will be myeloperoxidase positive. Do you know which one? Good. This, in fact, is going to be your P anchor, which is also called MPO anchor, or myeloproxidase. On the boards for you, three different terms that are important for you clinically, myeloproxidase. Our rods is one of them. What is it? It's a needle-like structure. It's an azurophilic granule stain with antibody against, there you have it, myeloproxidase. Do not forget that, ever, because the description of that our rod might actually come back to be positive for myeloproxidase. And if you weren't paying attention, you miss a question unnecessarily. Now, if you see one, 
it's most likely M3. Now, could it be the other AMLs? Sure it can. Sure it can. But if your patient has 1517 translocation and uh, you find that the treatment for, for uh, 1517 with ATRA, all trans retinoic acid, tends to be, tends to be uh, effective, then you know this is an R rod. If you take a look at this picture here, you see the needle, needle-like structure that the arrow is pointing to. The needle-like structure that the arrow is then pointing to, in fact, is an R rod. It then is positive for your myeloproxidase. This would be a picture for your acute myelogenous leukemia. And these are the large nuclei with nucleoli. These then represent the blast, the blast, the blast. But this, however, is actually being um, identified in your peripheral blood smear. The blast could be located in your bone marrow. They are, in fact, at greater than 20%. Here's my FAB classification. I want you to get a decent idea of uh, the different types of uh, myeloid cells that you can create from M0 all the way down to M7. Huh? Before we go on, though, I want you to take a look at M3. Acute promyositic leukemia. Anything before M3, well, you could have AML type 2, and that's myeloblastic. And then uh, I want you to move on further. Here's M5, monocytic. And this is the one that I'd like for you to know as having gingival hyperplasia. Gingival hyperplasia with M5. Then you have M6, you produce more RBCs. By the time you come to M7, platelets, I don't care how you do this. From M0 to M7, you're going through the myeloid lineage. Our focus has been thus far specifically on M3. Translocation 1517, retinoic acid receptor alpha. The fact that you can find our rods, I gave you all that information. Apart from, apart from that, though, I cannot guarantee that I'm not going to ask you about the others. So give yourself a nice little order and organization. Next up after M3 will be monocytes. M5 is gingival hyperplasia. After that is M6, your RBC. And by the time you come to M7, megakaryocyte. And if I were you, I'd make sure that I know what a megakaryocyte looks like in your bone marrow. They like that one a lot. So please be able to identify a megakaryocyte in a bone marrow for M7. There's a FAB classification for all acute myelogenous leukemia. And your age group here is between 15 to 60. AML. What's going on? Anemia. Fatigue. Tiredness. Susceptibility to infection. Leukopenia. Bleeding. Thrombocytopenia. Bone marrow infiltration. Bone pain. Things we've talked about already because you're invading the bone marrow. And, excuse me. You're actually, the cancer is originating from the bone marrow. So the bone marrow is infiltrated. And then you're dumping the cells into your Circulation, welcome to leukemia, right? And at some point in time, could this then uh, enter the lymph node and present as lymphoma? Yes, it can. M3 can be treated with ATRA, which stands for all trans retinoic acid. Why? Because the translocation 1517 will give you, the clinician, the receptor to then treat it properly, which is retinoic acid receptor alpha. How many letters in DIC? Uh, one, two, three. Correct. DIC could also manifest from M3. Once again, one last time. Do not forget what M3 stands for. Acute promyositic leukemia or promyositic leukemia, PML. Don't lose a question because uh, you weren't thinking or, you know what I mean? Like, don't look at things just unidimensional. Look at things as from a three-dimensional point of view. What else could they cause this? Call this. How else could they cause this? Oh, I know this information. It's stuck in my head. I just need to bring it forward. I'm here to try to help you do that.